their goal was socialism, to use racial exploitation uh, for the purpose of bringing in socialism. And in order to make these Black elites uh, uh, notable and relevant in the Black community, they sought to sabotage and undermine folks like Booker T. Washington, who did have genuine influence, uh, especially in the Black South. Welcome, everybody, to Conversations That Matter. My name is Alex Newman for The New American Magazine. We have some incredibly special guests with you today. They have created what I think is one of the most important documentaries in American history. Uh, and I, I'm not uh, exaggerating. I'm not using hyperbole. I think this documentary is absolutely critical to uh, the information in this documentary, to healing our country, and to uh, just uniting Americans as a people once more. Uh, it's information that really has been uh, buried, has been suppressed, has been demonized, but it's so critical. Uh, with us, we have uh, the two creators of this movie, uh, Chad Jackson. He is uh, the star, the co-producer, and also uh, narrates the film. Uh, we also have Justin Malone. He is the director and editor of the film. Uh, you probably recognize them. They did uh, Uncle Tom 1. I guess it was just Uncle Tom. Their new movie is called Uncle Tom 2, and uh, it is amazing. It was just released. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for for being with us. Uh, it's, it's an honor to have you. You guys had some some of the giants of the conservative movement, some of the giants in uh, evangelical Christianity as part of this movie. You had Larry Elder, Vody Baucom, uh, Stephen Broden, uh, just some incredible people. So uh, before we we start uh, drilling down, just tell us, why did you guys make the movie? Uh, you know, what was left unsaid in Uncle Tom that really needed to be said in Uncle Tom 2? And uh, what do you hope to accomplish with it? Well, I, after we released part one, um, you know, it was very well received and it found an audience. And so we, we, we had some success that we had never had before. And uh, there was a lot of momentum that picked up when that film was released. Um, so looking, you know, looking back, we had to throw a lot of stuff on the on the floor for part one. We had just gathered so much material. Um, so what it told me is that there was an audience that that people were uh, were receptive to the content in the film. And during the process of making part one, uh, Chad and I uh, became pretty close friends. And when we were kind of in that uh, riding that wave of the success of part one, uh, our conversation started going towards what do you want to do next? What should we do with this thing? Because it, it became a living organism. And uh, Chad and I both live in Dallas, Texas, so we were able to, you know, hang out and, you know, go to dinner and things like this. And the conversation started uh, like, what do you want to do? And uh, one night I asked Chad, like, what, what do you think about just coming on board and um, seeing what happens? And he called me the next morning and said that uh, he'd love to. So he started hitting the books and I started kind of mapping out the look and feel of the film. And we started bringing in people for interviews. And um, we were blessed to have two very supportive executive producers that let us have the time and the resources to really just figure this story out. And um, so we didn't really know exactly where we were going. We knew things that we knew there were things that were unsaid and 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 needed to be talked about, but we were blessed to have the support system to really discover the story organically. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, Uncle Tom, folks, if you haven't seen it yet, it's available on Amazon. It is phenomenal. But I think Uncle Tom, too, uh, is an even greater home run. Um, Chad, I want to ask you about uh, one of the key points, one of the key takeaways that I got out of the film. Uh, you guys were, were kind enough to send me an advanced copy, and I appreciate it so much. I, I was blown away. I've watched it several times now. Um, and one of the key takeaways, for me at least, was that uh, you know after slavery, uh, Black Americans were immediately starting to prosper. They were immediately moving up. They had strong families, strong churches. Uh, they were working hard, starting businesses. Uh, and yet, uh, you know, you look at the situation today and it's just really this incredible contrast. And you bring up two individuals that I, I think have very different worldviews that were key in this. Uh, you talk about Booker T. Washington and also uh, W.E. Du Bois or Dubois, however, however people pronounce his name. Uh, talk about those two different visions and those two different realities in terms of uh, what happened as, as black Americans came out of slavery. Certainly. So, you know, Booker T. Washington, as you know, he went to Tuskegee. 
in Alabama. Um, he was the leader of that school there. Um, the, the students that went to that school were either themselves former slaves or the, the sons and daughters of former slaves. And rather than wallowing in their circumstances, he encouraged them and told them that it's incumbent upon them to take uh, control of their own lives, to be men, to be women of honor, uh, to be men and women of faith. And if you do that, and if you are productive, regardless of what your circumstances are, you will be successful in this country. Uh, the same was true of everybody else of every ethnic background in this country. Uh, on the other hand, W.E.B. Du Bois was educated at Harvard. Uh, at the time that he went to Harvard, uh, Marxism was a popular ideology that these students were adopting. And, you know, uh, W.E.B. Du Bois got the full breadth of that. And so he got a degree in sociology as, when he graduated. He started something called the Niagara Movement, which didn't do so well. Um, Mary White Ovington uh, started something called the NAACP. They brought W.E.B. Du Bois on board and their goal was socialism, to use racial exploitation uh, for the purpose of ringing in socialism. And in order to make these black elites uh, uh, notable and relevant in the black community, they sought to sabotage and undermine folks like Booker T. Washington, who did have genuine influence, uh, especially in the Black South. And so that was a big difference. W.E.B. Du Bois wanted to destroy capitalism, uh, whereas uh, uh, Booker T. Washington sought to utilize capitalism for the advantage of Black folks, and it was, it was uh, producing tangibles, it was producing results. And so those are the, the two main differences between those two individuals. Yeah, it's such a fascinating story. I, I read uh, Up From Slavery by Booker T. Washington years ago uh, and was just blown away that uh, th this had been so thoroughly suppressed. You know, people have heard the name Booker T. Washington, but his ideas were just so incisive and so productive and they just were buried uh, or, or demonized. It's truly incredible. Uh, gentlemen, another issue that you tackle in the movie uh, is the issue of Marxism and how uh, communist operatives really... Um, went to war with America. And, and, you know, I think one of the points that's that's highlighted in the film is that you kind of you see the handiwork really clearly in the black community. And of course, now we see it in, in our entire country. But, um, you know, it, it manifested itself first in the black community. Uh, can you guys talk a little bit about that uh, communist infiltration, the, the goals, the methods? What were they trying to do and how did they do it? Well, the uh, so America was impenetrable by the communists. They wanted America because America was a world superpower, but it was very difficult for them to penetrate because Americans were very uh, individual minded. They were very uh, entrepreneurial minded. And most importantly, Americans had faith, uh, particularly the Black South. We had our Christian faith intact. And so as we point out and demonstrate in the film, if America was going to be taken and needed to be demoralized, and one of the incision points uh, was the black leaders, the so-called black leaders, the so-called black civil rights leaders who saw themselves as uh, being elite amongst blacks. And so unfortunately they were able to, in a very senator or sinister rather and deceptive way, uh, uh, lead black people astray to build what looked or appeared to be a mass movement and take advantage of a lot of people's desire for equality. And so it, it's not just the black community that these people were able to use for their sinister agenda, uh, but it's certainly one of them. And so one that we document in this movie. So, yeah. yeah. For me, for, for me um, it was very important to tell that story very clearly. You know, I was public school educated, you know, um, my journey through this whole uncle Tom uh, film both one and two is just been so educational and enlightening and spiritual. I mean, just everything. But when we, when we started uh, working on part two, um, I was learning as we were making the film and I realized that people don't even know the basic um, fundamentals of these worldviews. And, you know, we don't know who we don't learn who Karl Marx is, who Lenin is, who Stalin is, who Mao is like we don't learn these 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 historical 
figures in public school. You know, you learn Adolf Hitler every year, but you don't learn, you know, who Vladimir Lenin is. So, you know, what, you know, watching when you watch the film, you know, you, we're going to take you through that um, history because, you know, while, you know, people that study this, they understand this, but the mass, uh, the masses of America do not even know these basic ideas and these basic historical figures. So it was important for us when we started uh, laying the film out to set the stage and build a foundation so people can understand what these worldviews are and how they operate to where when you get into the second and the third act of the act of the film, it starts clicking for you um, what's happened to our country. And it's, um, you know, just to add to that point about education, which is another thing that we talk about in the film, there's a lot of research that went into uh, just developing a good understanding to where we can then uh, communicate that in a palatable way. And so part of what went into our research was a book actually that you helped write with Mr. Samuel Blumenfeld uh, called The Crimes of the Educators. Uh, the idea being that, you know, we're using social activism over here, but we're also using the education system to dumb down Americans to where they're becoming more and more susceptible to social justice movements. And so this is yet of, this is one of many ways in which, you know, enemies of America use to uh, ring in their sinister ideology. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's a point that I think was made very clearly by uh, Vody Baucom, who, who plays a, a major role in the film, uh, certainly one of the giants of uh, the evangelical world today, uh, just, uh, you know, hero to so many. And he just put out a book, I actually reviewed it for the New American, uh, Fault Lines. And this is a topic that you guys take up in the film as well. The, the whole division, the divide and conquer, the effort to, to divide up American society into various warring factions. Um, talk a little bit about that and, and Black Lives Matter and social justice and, and kind of this deliberate agenda to get Americans to see each other as other, as, as somebody who's, whose interests are opposed to our own. Uh, talk about that a little bit and why they, they tried to engineer that division and that hatred. Well, for, for me, it's like that was kind of the start of this whole journey. Um, you know, I grew up in the 90s and the 90s is an interesting part of American history because we were kind of over um, all the what, the perceived racism or, you know, it's like it, it was pretty much all but done. You had the L.A. riots and you had O.J. You had these these efforts that were trying to get back to that racial tension, but it really never caught on. Um, until I would say Barack Obama's second term is really where they turn the heat up. And so my personal experience was through Herman Cain running for president and just seeing that 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 hypocrisy that was so blatant. Uh, two years prior, if you didn't support Barack Obama, you were a racist, you were a bigot. And then Herman Cain comes on uh, the scene and same thing so that was just like the obvious hypocrisy and like well why can't blacks be conservative um so from for me personally I, my reality of this division wasn't real it just it, it wasn't real uh growing up in a town outside of dallas where you know we were about a third hispanic a third black a third white so i you know i grew up and what you know they would call a diverse situation and it wasn't there and so that was my starting point it was very very basic like what's going on in our country and i had no idea i would go this far down the rabbit hole um and what for me what the film shows is a loop right because our lives are very short so it only takes a couple of generations to kind of reset this this um ideology um america's hung on for dear life. I mean, we've been a very tough nut to crack. I think they're whittling us down, but like when you understand how the ideology works, it, it's easy to see how a Vietnam or a, or a, a 1940s China could easily fall to this because they weren't built on uh, the constitution and, and our Christian moral structure. So, I mean, it, it's been fascinating and it's, and, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's obvious now. And I, and I hope that people that watch this film, it will at least start something for them to like start researching these ideas because once you see it, you know, you can't unsee it, you know? 
No, it truly is extraordinary. And, you know, one of the, the points that I, I think is so critical is that there, there have been many black Americans who've tried to speak out about these things. Uh, and yet they're they're smeared with terms like Uncle Tom, you know, like like there's some or as, as Joe Biden put it, well, you ain't black if you're not voting. For the, who do these people think they are. Uh, I want to show a few clips from the film so the folks out there can just get get a taste of uh, this movie and we'll come right back and, and wrap it up. So, folks, check these clips out. Divine Providence was clearly operating in the lives of black Americans. Throughout history, black folks were honorable. They had integrity. That's what black people were. We were never taught that America was bad and that we were not Americans. We were raised to love America. Protesters topple a statue of Christopher statue Columbus and hundreds of statues of vandalized. You see people trying to rewrite history. The American people know these names have to go. Why is that? Whenever you have something to be proud of, people have less of a chance of controlling you. There are certain people who are using the Negro in order to establish that power in Washington. And the Negro is just merely a pawn in a game that's bigger than he is. Uh, gentlemen, uh incredible work you guys have done um really th this is so huge if, if we could get americans to watch this in huge numbers i think uh, so many of the problems that plague our country today uh would just magically disappear almost um how, how can people watch the film how can people support the film it's available now uh, i'm going to have a review of this uh, in the new american magazine if you're watching this when we release it it'll be coming out very soon uh, if you're watching this later it may already be out so you can look for that at the new american.com but gentlemen what's the best way for people to watch this film uh, give us the website and how can people support this effort if they want to. Yeah, so the film can be viewed at UncleTom.com. Um, you go there, you can stream or buy a DVD. Uh, so we do encourage people to do that. And after you watch the film, we invite you to go to IMDb and leave a review, social media, just to make people aware of it. We do believe that this is a message that needs to get out. And we're hoping that it would spread like wildfire. And so, you know, after you watch it, don't just sit on it and and do research, uh, actually share people or share the information with people. Uh, that would that would mean a whole lot. Yeah, it's it's very important. And, you know, in, in today's censorship, we're, we're obviously feeling that, um, you know, our social media has been frozen. So it's really going to kind of be old school uh, kind of town hall situations where we can go out and, you know, we're, we're doing a lot more screenings with this one. So look for screenings in your uh, in your area. And we actually have a host a screening button on our website. So if you if you have a group uh, in an organization, you're part of a church, uh, big or small, sign up for those screeners and we'll support you in that because we want to get this in front of people. And, you know, it's going to rely on some word of mouth um, and, and just, you know, if people that are moved by the film to tell their tell their friends and family and church and coworkers to watch it. Um, so please do so if the film moves you. Very good. Uh, well, I want to congratulate you again, gentlemen. You guys have done uh, an extraordinary thing here. We are very thankful. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with us. Uh, again, that review, folks, out there will be coming very soon if you're watching this right when we release it. But I cannot recommend the film highly enough. Go watch it. It is worth every penny. And then after you watch it and, and realize the significance, share it out there. Get some extra copies. Give them to your friends. Give them to your neighbors. Host a screening. Folks, uh, this is just, uh, it's so critical with, with the division that the Marxists are inflaming, the law. The, the destruction of all of our families, the targeting of our churches and our countries. Uh, the, the message in this film uh, has just never been more urgent. Uh, I'm Alex Newman. This is Conversations That Matter. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Until next time, God bless you all.